This franchise, Paper Mario, has had its fan base torn for a long time now. Mainly by, well, that pun I just made, torn. That's because these three newer games put far more emphasis on paper-related gimmicks, taking place in an actual world of paper instead of just one with a storybook quality. Since there is such a divide between these now six main games, I propose we unofficially split the two trilogies apart, calling these first three games the Mario Storybook Trilogy, and the recent three the Mario Pop-Up Book Trilogy, aka literal Paper Mario. This can't be officially recognized as like Star Wars, which also has one trilogy much more beloved than the others, all of these games will forever share the same title. But can we as fans agree to treat them as two separate entities moving forward? I think we'd be better off this way. I'd argue that this is what Intelligent Systems has already done. Sticker Star was always the new standard, with Color Splash and the Origami King following in its footsteps. It's a dissonance between what the creators are putting out and what the longtime players want. More than anything, these two sets of games treated as one, with no response from the other side, has been seriously hurting this community. To give an odd and overly complex analogy, let's say that the first three Paper Mario games are people, and that they all live together in a single household. The N64 version is the eldest, a respectable type with a good head on his shoulders. The Thousand Year Door, then, is the middle child, He's cooler, smarter, and edgier than his older brother, but the two get along exceptionally. They hardly ever fight, and are inseparable, bunking in the same room. Their friends even say it's hard to get along with one of the two, but not the other. That brings us to the third child, Super Paper Mario, the quirky youngest who is alike in many ways, but has a lot of different ideas. He's individualistic sleeping in a separate room, but the siblings all live under the same roof, and get along for the most part. It's easy to see then that these three are all cut from the same cloth. Intelligent Systems, aka their parents, consist of the dad, a great scriptwriter but whose publisher has begun pushing for a sterilization of the characters from his works. Then there's the mother who, work with me here, is a renowned MMA fighter which is where the sons likely got their spunk. The parents have been having marital problems for a while though, and so the father decided to move far away, where he ended up starting a new family, coincidentally ending up with another set of three kids with a different woman. Those kids are Sticker Star, Color Splash, and the Origami King. These three younger siblings are all creative types, using arts and crafts to tell stories mostly inspired by the adventures of their estranged half-brothers they sometimes hear about. These children all have the same father, but live in entirely different households. His new wife, of course, is the opposite of his ex, very anti-combat. Furthermore, these children are much younger and inexperienced in the quote-unquote battles of the real world. Unlike their half-brothers, too, beloved by most who meet them, these kids are bullied because they can never live up to expectations. But then what happens? Well, like an awful sitcom, imagine that all six children are grown. They end up meeting and decide to room together in the same apartment. Turns out that was a terrible idea, because they all constantly fight. And from the outside, the entire complex is getting praised on behalf of the Mario Story trilogy's reputation, and egged from the literal Paper Mario's reception at the same time. Do you see what I'm getting at? This family may have one parent in common, all sharing their dad's name, but they lead very different lives. They should probably see each other for Thanksgiving, but they don't have to live together because it isn't harmonious. So let's board up the Mario Story crew in their own respectable home. As for the literal Paper Mario trilogy, let's give them housing of whatever type you'd like. Do you not mind these games? Then put them up in a comfortable vacation home somewhere. Do you despise them instead? Make it a crummy shack you can pelt rocks at. 
Wait, paper beats rock, so scissors. Regardless, my point is that we should not chastise fans that go to visit one or the other simply because of their varied interests. Will intelligent systems get back together with their X and make another game like the classics? Or will the hypothetical next set of three games be with a different partner? Alright, that analogy is getting a little weird, but nonetheless, I'm not saying don't petition outside the studio until the former happens, but let's try to be aware of where we stand as a fandom. Many of us love this trilogy, some of us like this one, and few can appreciate both or select titles in between. As a family, we should check in on each other every now and again. But when we do get together, it's clear that our opinions often clash. So while we're all in the same room at a community meeting or conference hall, let's all keep it respectful and try tolerating one another. Thank you all for watching. Let's go! Mamma mia!